Okay, we're back here inside theCUBE. This is EMC World's exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. I'm John Furrier, the founder. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm joined, my co-host for this segment is Jeff Kelly from Wikibon, Wikibon analyst and big data. And this topic in this segment is going to be around big data, but also storage. There's a lot of, lot of stuff going on around images, et cetera. And we're Ken Malero, senior director at Pixia Corporation. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we are here in the ground floor in Las Vegas. You hear the noise all around us. There's people yelling all over the place and the blogger lounge behind us. Um, but you guys do something very, very interesting. You guys, uh, talk about your application first. Introduce your, sure. your, your application and we'll dig into some of the questions. Sure, thanks. So, uh, appreciate speaking about it, but uh, Pixia Corp is a software company. We specialize in data access for large data, so unstructured data, mainly raster data, so heavy pixels, um, satellite imagery, oh, also motion imagery, um, and also video data. So obviously, you know, we heard from uh, the folks here at EMC, you know, Joe Tucci, David Goulden, Pat Gelsinger today. Um, Internet of Things is hot, and Paul Moritz highlighted in his keynote today. Yeah. GE invested $100 million in the Pivotal mm -hmm. company. So, obviously Internet of Things is going to throw off more data. Right. Surveillance cameras, satellite right. images, this is stuff exactly. that's been around. That's kind of legacy, but now you're going to have a lot more data. Right. So talk about the dynamics of what that does for infrastructure and applications. Mm -hmm. And what are some, what's some of the state of the art, bleeding edge things that you guys right. seeing? Well, we work a lot with the government, uh, defense and intel industry, so they have a lot of unique sensors. Uh, a lot of those unique sensors are starting to be used domestically. Uh, we've heard a lot about that stuff in the news, uh, but what we provide is a lot of the data access to that. And as those uh, data sets grow in size, um, the problem for them um, is that they're really becoming uh, just unwieldy. So you have terabytes and petabytes worth of this imagery data uh, that you need fast access to, small, uh, small random block reads to, uh, and you need solutions for providing So data. are you storing the data, or are you just providing software to access data, or both? So we're a little bit of both. So we provide uh, the software that sits on top of, uh, sp specifically EMC Isilon, uh, and it, it allows you to basically access the data as a logical container. So you have a lot of that data that's all uh, containerized into a single layer uh, that's homogeneous and you can access that very quickly. So could you talk a little bit about, uh, to the extent that you can, sure. uh, some of the types of applications that mm -hmm. folks are building on top of this data. Is it mostly mm -hmm. just to access the images to, mm -hmm. to view them, or are there some, uh, also some deeper analytics taking place? A yeah, there's uh, a lot of analytics. Um, on the government side, there's all types of algorithms that they're running on the data. Um, all, it, very simple things from uh, building tracks, <coughs> uh, uh, from moving objects, um, building information of what's changed in the environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's not only uh, defense and intel, but there's also a lot of natural resources types of uh, applications for it. So uh, changing of uh, the environment from a city as urban uh, uh, it, uh, cities start to grow. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're talking about analysis of the images themselves, not necessarily mm -hmm. the metadata that that's associated with those mm -hmm. images, but actually the images themselves. That's is that, correct. Is that yeah. right? So it's we're actually providing up the raster data specifically, the the heavy pixels. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what the challenge involved there. I mean, um, you know, for, for this kind of it could be a gold mine for not mm -hmm. just. Uh, for the Intel community and, and government, right. but but I could certainly see uh, commercial application for right. this as well. So what it, are what are some of the challenges though that, that you had to overcome to make this data available for analysis? Right, right. So uh, the, uh, the large volumes of this data, be it if it's satellite imagery or if it's video data, is is the size. I mean, you're talking about terabytes or petabytes of imagery uh, that you're really looking at a very small area of interest in. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So to be able to pull that out, uh, that small area of interest out of a, such a large data set is a huge problem. And, and so that's really where we, where we focus on. The other thing is, is all of these algorithms and all of these uh, applications are, need a standard way, an open standards way of accessing that data. So we provide web services, RESTful APIs uh, on top of that uh, data set so that people can access that with whatever tool they're access, uh, using. Mm -hmm. What are some of the storage challenges that you guys see? Because you know, you're on the bleeding edge and this mm -hmm. is going to be a use case that's going to be pretty defined for other people. I, right. mean, I mean, images not so much, but big data, mm -hmm. big, well, big heavy could be images, files, whatever. Right, unstructured data. Un yeah. Unstructured data, loosely structured data, mm -hmm. not the rigid. Well, you got to ask a lot of questions you don't know yet, so we, we, we like to break things down to known queries and unknown queries. Right. For that time, you need to ask an unknown query. Um, you, gotta, you don't want to have to reset tables and do all kinds of loading the data. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the storage challenges that you face and how did you overcome them? So, one of the things that we partner with Isilon on is the scale out capability of their NAS. So, as this data set grows in size, and as the number of users uh, grow with, and the number of requests, right, queries uh, start to grow, we need to be able to access that data very, very quickly. Um, and so when, when you're talking about petabytes, uh, uh, terabytes to petabytes, um, the ability to scale and maintain that consistent performance is uh, is an issue that that we that we tried to address. Where are you guys taking the, the solution, your your application and solution, mm -hmm. and what are the storage needs here that are around the corner for you guys? Uh, video. I mean, there's so much more video. I mean, you see not only commercial applications like YouTube and and Facebook and others, but on the government side as well, we have uh, unique sensors again uh, that are collecting more and more video. The video is huge uh, problem. And, and uh, video is a huge you problem. You indexing that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, we're indexing that and we're providing quick access to that, to all types of analytical algorithms. The Isilon reps must love you guys. Do more uh, they, video. They, they do, they do. <laughs> Back up the truck. Yeah, exactly. You know, sign the exactly. POs. <laughs> oh man, and, you know, the video is a hard problem. I mean, uh -huh. how do you tackle that video? I mean, obviously we're doing, we're live streaming right, right now to right. hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. What, how, do you, how do you handle that ingestion and how do you do all the indexing? Uh, well, we have a unique, uh, uh, container, it's a, it's a logical container, like I said. Uh, you know, I equate it to kind of a zip file without, uh, without compression. So we're kind of like this database uh, within a file. Uh, so we're able to take all those streams, concatenate them together, piece together all the metadata, and uh, provide a, a kind of a single view to the data set. Uh, within that logic. So your big data uh, and container. big storage. Big data big, meets big, big storage. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so lots of times we'll, we'll say we're big data, and we're not, not necessarily in the sense of, of uh, analytics, but we're in the sense of very large files, right? Yeah, you got to come in on like a laser focus and pick a block, pieces, pieces data out and bring it in, right, quickly, and be able to do that on an ad hoc basis. Exactly, so you're, you're talking about a query, say Google Maps, right? and a query, and you're doing a query of a little area, and you're talking about a 100 kilobyte view that you're getting back, but you're pulling it from a three or four or five petabyte set of data. Yeah, and, and it's so got to happen like that. And it's got to be a millisecond response. Yeah. Wow, that's huge. So, uh, so I'm curious, so, so you, know, you mentioned analytics, we talked a little bit about some of the analytic sure. capabilities on top. Mm -hmm. What's your, um, can you help us understand how, kind of what you do, the uh, storing and making images available to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to the enterprise and to government clients. Mm -hmm. uh, how, where does that fit alongside something, things like what Pivotal's doing with uh, right. Hadoop? And bringing right. in some of more of the text-based right. analytics. And, and I, I imagine there's got to be some correlation between oh, the images and the text. And definitely. How, and do, how do the two fit together? And we're, so that's, that's a great point. So Pivotal is one of those relationships we're starting to grow. Uh, we're trying to provide our customer solutions um, to bring in together the metadata that's being collected, mm -hmm. so which is text, uh, in the Pivotal system, and marry that up with the data that we're deriving or that we're storing in Pixia containers. Um, so, so that when you build an algorithm, a data scientist goes out there and builds an algorithm, 
it can take in those various types of data sets, uh, not only the metadata for the imagery, but the metadata, the text metadata that may be uh, collected for other things uh, that Pivotal's bring into the table. So we're really trying to provide that kind of integrated um, solution to some of our customers with Pivotal, yeah. Ken, my final question, because we're sure. getting tight on time here. We got the, get the end of the day here on day two. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE, by the way. Really, yeah, really, no really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, great application. Uh, go to uh, Pixia Corp. Is there a website? Yeah, Pixia.com. Pixia.com, P-I-X-I-A.com. That's right. Um, share with the folks out there what you've learned. I mean, obviously, you, you, you're touching a lot of different things. They're mm -hmm. kind of spread a little horizontal. It's not so much vertical, per se, right. but you got big, big data problems, you got software, you got uh, all kinds of coding, you also mm -hmm. got storage. Share with the folks out there what you've learned uh, and, and advice that you give to, to your peers out there about if they had to face the same road that you went down. Um, great question. <laughs> uh, well, I, really open standards. For yeah. us, open Get standards. Get a big fat checkbook. Yeah, exactly. Be ready for the storage bill. Exactly. <laughs> no, open standards is a big deal to us. Uh, being able to have uh, access to all of that data from a variety of algorithms, UI, uh, GUIs, uh, tools, visualization platforms, uh, but the data comes in so many different ways in so many different formats. So we want to normalize all of that, but we want open standards. So really RESTful web services that are open standards, when you build an as a service uh, web service, build it with open standards. Okay, well we really appreciate it, Ken. Thanks for coming yep. inside theCUBE, Pixie Corporation, check them out. Uh, doing some really interesting things with big data and images. I mean, think Google Maps, that's these, doing things like that is what these guys yeah, do, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a real, real world problem, and uh, this is part of the new era. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>